For a company that has innovated so much in mobile phones, Sony really doesn't get a lot of appreciation. They were the first with a waterproof phone, they were the first with a phone with a 4K display, and now they seem to be basically the only premium phone maker left that is still delivering features that, I mean, used to be ubiquitous on Android phones. Things like expandable storage, headphone jacks, and of course, the latest and greatest processors. So this is the Xperia 1 III, and it's a phone that I'm really, really excited to show you guys. First, the obligatory unboxing though. We've got our, hopefully it's a 30 watt, adapter because it does support 30 watt charging. It is a 30 watt fast charging adapter. Very nice. It includes a USB-C cable. Okay. And wow, that's, that's it, ladies and gentlemen. Not much of an unboxing, but that's okay. Today is all about the phone. It's got a six and a half inch display, but remember when Sony made those mini phones that had flagship class specs, but were still very one hand handleable? Even with my small hands, because it's so skinny, it's actually got a 21 by nine aspect ratio. It is pretty easy to reach across. We'll take a look at the outside first though. So it's got a quad camera system. Three of them are megapixels. So that's the wide, the ultra wide and the telephoto. And then it has a 0.3 megapixel time of flight sensor in here as well. It's got NFC, obviously you got the logo on the back. It has wireless charging, fast wireless charging as well as reverse wireless charging. So if you have some Sony earphones like those ones we unboxed recently, you can charge them up with your phone and then this is really important. Check this out. Do, 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 do. Right there, totally toolless, either dual SIM or micro SD tray. That's right. You've got a 4,500 milliamp hour battery built in. So it turns out you can still put a big battery in a slim phone design and have expandable storage. And yes, headphone jack. It's gone back to the traditional top mounted location instead of the bottom that became more popular towards the end of the headphone jack era. But hey, I mean, I'll take it, right? Over on the other side, we've got far more hardware buttons than I'm used to seeing on modern devices. We've got our volume rocker, as well as our lock button, which doubles as a fingerprint sensor, nice. As well as a dedicated button for pulling up Google Assistant. There you go. And a dedicated button, that's right, for pulling up your camera. It's almost like Sony has a rich heritage as, a, as an imaging company. They're actually using Zeiss optics for the cameras. And apparently they worked with the same team that worked on the Alpha 9 to develop the camera for this. So I'm, I mean, that's not to say that, you know, every phone that was built in collaboration with a cinema camera team was a success. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. I had something terrible caught in my throat, but I've actually, I cheated a little bit on this short circuit. I've actually been playing with this thing a fair bit over the last uh, couple of weeks and it's pretty, it's pretty good. One of the things that really stands out about what Sony's done here is the depth of their camera app. Obviously you can get third-party camera apps if you don't like just, you know, the one click operation of your stock camera app, but this, Man, with this, I don't see why almost anyone would want that. Everything is right at your thumb tip, so you can adjust which camera you wanna use, adjust your zoom levels, all that good stuff. They've got, man, there's so, there's, there's so much depth to it. So you can change the ultra wide to prioritize either correcting for the distortion or overall image quality. What's up, Brandon, how's it going? But then if you don't want that, you just flip over to, oh boy, here we go. Manual exposure, shutter speed priority. Now we are talking. Is that a camera app or what, Brandon? <laughs> it's freaking awesome. So you can play around with whether you want autofocus on or off. You can change your shooting format. So raw, raw and JPEG, JPEG. Uh, for video, they actually worked with the Venice team to create a more uh, flat cinematic shooting profile. You can shoot in 24 FPS. They have put a ton of attention into this and the work really shows. And just because it's a 12 megapixel main shooter, don't underestimate it. There's a lot more to life than megapixels. And shockingly, it doesn't even have a super thick camera bump. I just love that there's a dedicated shutter button and a dedicated button for launching the camera because honestly, not a photographer. That's not my jam. Um, for me, it's more about capturing the moment. So if this thing's in my pocket, I'm going on my way out of my pocket, hold the button, boom, my camera app is launched. I am ready to go, love that super responsive. I'm extremely, extremely happy with it. You're not gonna have the same kind of crazy zoom that you find on some other cameras. Okay, yep, that's fair enough. But this is 
more than enough for what most people would need. I realized we made it this far and I haven't even talked about specs yet. Oh wait, I gotta do my sponsor spot. This video is brought to you by Volta. The Volta 2.0 cable is a single reliable cable for all your USB devices. It supports charging and data transfer on a wide range of devices. It's magnetic and snag resistant and comes with a 30 day money back guarantee and lifetime warranty. You can check it out at the link in the video description. It's got a Snapdragon 888 SoC, 12 gigs of RAM and then 256 or 512 gigs of storage and I want to talk a little bit more about the display. It's an OLED display and the horizontal resolution here is actually 3840. So it's a 4K class display, but obviously given that it's only 1600 megapixels wide, the, the overall pixel count is quite a bit lower. It's OLED, so you're going to get nice fast response times, perfect blacks, all of that good stuff that's great for just uh, gaming and well, pretty much everything. And it can do up to 120 hertz. Obviously, if we're gonna talk about the display, we need to fire up some movies. How to Train Your Dragon Hidden World looks absolutely freaking awesome right out of the box. But one of the things I like most about this phone actually is how incredibly configurable it is. They've got what is basically the equivalent of filmmaker mode built into the phone. I love it. Everyone should just do this. So stuff looks like it's supposed to. It looks so good. Oh yeah, did I mention there's no notch? Right? Well, they just put a little bezel on it. Who cares? And it's not like they aren't making good use of it because da, 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 it has an amplified earpiece for stereo audio. Not bad. This is the kind of device that just makes me feel happy, you know? Which isn't to say that it's absolutely perfect. I did find that the very narrow screen, I, I mean, it's hard to come up with something where it, you know, made something way worse, but there were just little things. Like for example, in the multi-window switching thing, I can't even tell what this is. Like I don't even, I don't even know what these windows next to me are. It would be nice if I could kind of see a little bit more. Oh, this is something that's just a totally personal pet peeve, but for whatever reason, Sony doesn't allow you to switch the location of the back and multitask view button. I, I like my back button here where it's easier to reach because I use it a lot more. They just don't have that option in spite of how configurable it is in other ways. Like they do have battery management features built in that allow you to take care of your battery so you can set custom times for when you leave it to charge. You can tell it to have a charging limit so that you're not fully charging it all the time, which is really stressful on the battery. Like it's freaking awesome. And this is really cool. Sony provides a lot of documentation that is built right into the phone as you are using it. That is not something that you can take for granted. They actually explain what all of this does, explain battery charging curves and stuff like that. They're not treating you like a child. They're just trying to educate you as an adult that just might not know these things. But Sony expects their customers to care about them in return because this phone is gonna run you a whopping 1299 US dollars. I mean, there's even more cool stuff. Like they have an equivalent of shadow play for gamers. So you can actually go back and play back the last uh, few seconds of play. I think it's 30 seconds, side the 30 or 60 seconds. I, di I didn't use it much, I'm not a mobile gamer. But like, <laughs> it kind of never ends. Uh, Victus glass on the front, Gorilla Glass 6 on the back. I could talk about a fair few more things. Uh, there's this cool side sense thing so you can quick launch apps, you can open up multi-window. Because the display is so tall, you can actually do two apps, top and bottom. So if you like to, you know, watch YouTube videos while you're browsing Reddit or whatever, that's something you could do. Um. That's actually a pretty good use case for the tall screen. But that's about it for the scope of uh, short circuit unboxing. So thank you guys very much for watching and subscribe and all that good stuff. 